afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. One of these teams, the Vikings, feel as if, at least their fans do, backed into the playoffs as they lost three out of the last four games. But nevertheless, they're here. The Saints won nine in a row. That's how they got here. But with all that outside, this is a new season, and they both began at zero and zero. John Madden is here with me, of course. John, this is a playoff atmosphere, the wild card game, everything at stake. What's different about a playoff game? I think, I think just the excitement level. You know, your heart's beating just a little faster. The players are down there on the sideline. They're ready to go now, and there's something about the finality of it. You know, there are 10 teams in the playoffs. Nine of them are going to lose their last game. Then you take that thing where the winners go on, the losers go home. I'll tell you, every guy down on that field feels that right now. You're so right. When you talk about the Minnesota situation, the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is the quarterback situation. What about it? Well, you know, Tommy Kramer's starting, and I'm sure Jerry Burns is thinking, we'd like to have the Tommy Kramer that played last year, because we all remember that he was the leading quarterback in the NFL. Now, he was injured in preseason this year. And he's really never recovered. And in fact, as you can see here, he started five games. He has finished none. Now, Wade Wilson has started seven games, and then of those games, he started the last two games, and I think that Jerry Burns is thinking that he would like to start Kramer, see if he has the hot hand. If he does, go with him. If he doesn't, he would rather have Wade Wilson on the sideline where he can bring him in later. John, when you think about the New Orleans Saints, you don't think of a lot of big names, superstars, what have you, but they won nine in a row. They're in the playoffs for the first time ever. What do you think got them here? You know, I think part of that is Jim Finks and the Orleans organization. I think a big part is head coach Jim Mora. But I think another part is they do the little things. Sometimes the things we don't look at, the intangible. If you look at their record here, you can see that time of possession, 34 minutes, they were first in the league. Turnover ratio, plus 20, they're first in the league. Then in another area, special team. We don't look at that much, but Mel Gray was the leading punt returner. Morton Anderson, probably the best kicker in the league. He was first in touchback. Inside the 40, he is 100%. And look at that other stat. They have blocked eight kicks, and they've scored on seven of those. And I think you take that whole package, and those are the things that got the Saints here today. In fact, Jim Mora said yesterday when we talked with him that if it were not for what John Madden was just talking about, our special teams, we wouldn't be in the playoffs. This place is going to be bedlam. So is the city. So has been the city. Anderson's kickoff is deep. Darren Nelson has it sail over his head and out of the end zone. And that's one of those intangibles. It sure is a break when you don't have to cover kickoffs. Kramer will start at quarterback for the Vikings as they have the ball first. He'll be looking at a three-man front. Bruce Park, Tony Elliott, the nose tackle, and Jim Wilkes. An excellent group of linebackers. Jackson, Mills, Vaughn Johnson, who's had a great year, as had Pat Swilling. Secondary has Waymer, Jakes on the corners, and Maxi. The lone setback is Albert Anderson. Nelson in the slot to the left. And here's Kramer going to work on first down. Chase and brought down by Ricky Jackson. He's had a Pro Bowl year. What a way to start it. A loss of eight. Let's look at the offense. Kramer, Darren Nelson, and Alfred Anderson, the two runners. Carter and Leo Lewis start at the wide receivers. Zimmerman, Huffman, Loudermilk, Cook, Irwin, and Steve Jordan, an excellent tight end. It'll be second and 18. They're backed up to their 12-yard line. Rick Finney and Darren Nelson now are the two running backs. Fumble on the exchange from center. The Saints lead the league in turnover, or led it, and they get the first one. I'll tell you, this Saint team came out of that locker room, fired up, kicked the ball into the end zone, start off with a sack on the first play, and they come up with an interception on the second play. That just looked like a rusty Tommy Kramer. Vaughn Johnson made the recovery for the Saints, and they'll have it first down just outside the 10. They do make things happen. As you say, it 
all starts with those special teams that Morton Anderson kicks the ball out of the end zone, gets everyone fired up. The defense sprints on the field. And this is an excited team. Dalton Hilliard at the last moment replaced Reuben Mays. A bear back in the pocket. Struggles back to the line of scrimmage. Stopped by Chris Dolman. Maybe he got a yard. A bear the quarterback. He comes from cutoff, Louisiana, not far from here. Reuben Mays and Buford Jordan usually are the two running backs. Eric Martin and Mike Jones, the wide receivers. Dombrowski, Edelman, Hilgenberg, Trapillo, Brock. And the tight end is Hobie Brenner, second and nine. Hilliard is the lone setback. Cliff Benson. Split wide to the right. A bear in the direction of Eric Martin. Touchdown, Saints. after the fumble recovery by Vaughn Johnson. The Vikings and Tommy Kramer fumble the snap from center. And the Saints, who led the regular season in plus figures as far as turnovers are concerned, again take advantage. The Vikings have Darren Nelson back deep in the middle, and Anderson, who killed the first kickoff, lines this one. And away and out of the end zone again. What a weapon he is. Let's watch that touchdown. It was interesting. The Saints had three tight ends here. Here's Cliff Benson. Now they just go right here, and they just run to Martin right here, a corner pattern. But they had three tight ends, making them think it was a short yardage thing. Then they take Eric Martin, put him in the slot, you see, and he just runs an individual pattern there, beats his man by two steps. And so the Vikings trail 7-0. Leo Lewis split wide to the right. Anthony Carter to the left. Kramer pitches back to Nelson. Eight of about four stopped by Vaughn Johnson and Sam Mills. Mills is quite a story, John. He played for Jim Mora in the USFL. They said he was too small, too little, too short to everything well he's only five foot nine and he said that he has used that all his life you know when he was in high school they said he was too small when he went to college little montclair state said he couldn't play played in the usfl said he couldn't play in the nfl well of course he is and not only is he playing but he made the pro bowl this year quite a story here's kramer back to throw coming out of the pocket Chased and tripped short of a first down by Tony Elliott, the nose tackle. He got four yards, so it'll bring up a third and short situation. Yeah, it was interesting that first series that the Vikings had. The first play, Tommy Kramer went to a play pass. Now, that's where you fake the run and throw the pass, and Kramer said he thought they could do that because the, the Saint defense is so aggressive. Now, there's two thoughts on that. Do you do it right away? When they think it's run, or you establish that you're running, invite them to do it, and then go to it later. Anthony Carter and Leo Lewis line up wide right. Kramer back in the pocket, fires complete to Leo Lewis, who's been bothered by bad ribs, but started nevertheless. He's stopped by Brett Maxey. Jerry Burns was saying we'll probably see a lot of Hassan Jones today splitting with Leo Lewis because of those ribs. He said it's tough when you get that thing. Then you have to wear the extra pad 
And then if you catch a ball against your body, it pops out. And you're always worried about those drops and fumbles. And in fact, last week, Leo Lewis had one pop out of his hands. That was a big interception for the Redskins. The Redskins got the ricochet on first and 10. Kramer back to throw. Just does have time. Intended for Carter incomplete. Covered by Dave Weimer. Incomplete. Well, that's that deep threat. You know that the Vikings are going to do that. They're going to do it early, and they're going to do it all day. Anthony Carter is one of those big play guys. He's one of those big play guys that draws double coverage most of the time, but he's capable of beating double coverage. Last week we saw against the Redskins, they had three guys on him, and he still caught a 50-yard pass. That's the mark of a great one if you know you're going to get that double coverage and still have the capability of beating it. Jordan was the man in motion. Nothing is happening for Darren Nelson as that St. defense led by Ricky Jackson, number 57, for two and throwing for a loss of two. If you have to pick any, any strength of this New Orleans Saints, it's probably the linebacker group. If they have an all-star group, that's probably it. Ricky Jackson's been in the Pro Bowl. Sam Mills is in the Pro Bowl. And I think number 56, Pat Swilling, could be the best of all of them. He's going to be in a lot of Pro Bowls. No doubt about that. Third down and 12. Hassan Jones and Leo Lewis. Split wide to the right. Anthony Carter to the left. Low snap. Kramer fumbles it. And down under a pile of Saints. Jim Wilkes was the first man there. That's the second sack of the day for the Saints. That was a low snap. That's not necessarily Kramer's fault. I tell you, as Tommy Kramer gets up, he knows that in this game, he's only going to be able to take one real hit on that right shoulder. And when he gets that, then that makes his whole numb, his whole arm numb. That'll be the end of him for the day. Bucky Scribner, who has replaced Greg Coleman as the Viking putter. Back deep for Minnesota, Mel Gray. Saints went after it. Gray signals fair catch. Has it hit him and get away from him? And the Vikings might have gotten that turnover. They do. the recovery. That's the thing now, now with Mill Gray, he, he doesn't have to catch the ball here, but if it touches him as it did, now it's a free ball. Now the Saints have to get on it, and if they don't, if the Vikings get there first, as they do, then that's a fumble recovery and the Vikings ball. So the Vikings will take over at the New Orleans 27. Vikings have a new quarterback, Wade Wilson, has replaced Tommy Kramer. Pumps gets to Darren Nelson, and Nelson gets inside the 25 to about the 23. Tony Elliott and Jim Wilkes made the stop. You know, I said that Tommy Kramer was going to play as long as that first hit, and I think maybe he got it on that last sack that he took. Well, you can see him perhaps flexing his right hand, and that's what happens, as you said, John. The, the numbness goes from the shoulder all the way down the arm into his thumb and his right index finger. Well, I didn't think that Tommy Kramer would finish this game today, but I thought he would finish the first quarter. Here's Wade Wilson back and coming out of the pocket. Wilson is hammered by Ricky Jackson. He picked up four. Let's see if we can see what happened to Kramer. Well, here it is, and again, it's his, it's his right side. You see him following through there, and he gets hit on that right side, and he's holding his arm, really, before he even went down. He was worried more about the hit in the head that would jam the neck back than he was the hit in the arm. Third down and three. Balls at the New Orleans 20. Wilson back to throw. A flag is thrown or a whistle is blown before the thing started. Ball start. 68 offense. Third down. Tom 
Dooley. Greg Cook moved too soon. Dooley is the referee. The headlinesman Jerry Bergman. Bob Moore is the back judge. Johnny Greer, the field judge. Al Conway, Bama Glass, and Dave Hawk, the rest of the officiating group. And this is an all-star cast as far as officials are concerned. Right, they're not the normal crews. They they grade the officials all year. And then the best officials get the playoff game assignments. Alan Rice and Darren Nelson, Hassan Jones in motion. The Saints swarm around Wilson. He barely got it away in the direction of Leo Lewis. He could get nothing on the ball. And it's incomplete. Van Jakes on the coverage. You know, last night, Jerry Burns kept talking about things they have to do. And he says, when we get down there, we have to score. He said, I don't know what it is. It's no one thing. The only thing we can think of is maybe when we get close, it's just lack of confidence. Chuck Nelson will attempt a field goal. Bucky Stribner, the punter, will do the holding. This is an area in which the Vikings have not had a lot of success. A trouble spot. Trouble no more from 42 yards away. The Vikings get on the board. But New Orleans, lead, New Orleans leads it 7 to 3. Pat Summerall, John Madden, and we're at the Louisiana Superdome where the Vikings trail the New Orleans Saints 7 3. Four plays. And they got a Chuck Nelson field goal from 42 yards, his first over 40 yards in the last six games. Gray back in the center. Barry Word on one side and Dalton Hilliard on the other. They've got some weapons back to return kicks for the Saints. Of course, Gray already gave up that one big play, the fumble on the punt return that was turned into three points by the Vikings. It was a funny play. I don't know if the ball got lost in the lights or, or what. Nelson squibs it. Bounces away from Word. He just barely does get on it before the Vikings arrive. Very nearly. Special team turnover by the Saints. You know, it's funny, as you were saying earlier, Jim Morris says that if it weren't for our special teams, or we wouldn't be in the playoffs this year. And how everyone talks about the offense, the defense, the superstars, and you really don't pay too much attention to that area. You see, there's someone, Joe Marciano, special teams coach of the year. See, they know this group's been here. They've seen the Saints win nine in a row. And they've got some memories, too. Tell you, there aren't many special teams coaching the NFL that get their names on post. That's right. Well, Gray was the man in motion. A bear on a screen pass intended for Dalvin Hilliard. You know, the Vikings, as we said before, haven't been to the playoffs since 1982. The Saints, this is their first appearance. They really got a shot in the arm when the USFL folded and they started to pick up some of the good players. You know, I think both teams did. If you look at the Saints, Bobby Hebert, of course, the starting quarterback was from the USFL. Mel Gray, Chuck Comiskey, the starting fullback. Vaughn Johnson, Van Jake, Sam Mills is in the Pro Bowl. All of these guys came to the Saints after the USFL. It really had an impact. <laughs> is picked off by Isaac Hope. And the Vikings. Hebert was under pressure, just barely got rid of it. And he might have been better off not to. Yeah, that's one thing. The Saints are getting away from what they usually do, and that's that ball control passing game where you only throw the ball five to ten yards. That one was really a deep pass for this Saint team. The two linebackers are very close. Let's watch the interception here. We're going to see the tight end, Hobie Brenner, is running a corner pattern. Holt, the defensive back, bumps him here. Brenner stops. Holt keeps running the pattern. Watch, him. and that's how he comes up with the interception. When the tight end stops there, then you see Isaac Holt kept going. Vikings run their 
first play, Wade Wilson, an attempt in the direction of Anthony Carter, deflected by Ricky Jackson. So it's incomplete. The Vikings have the ball just short of the 50-yard line. You know, it was interesting yesterday, Pat, we were talking to the Saints players and coaches that they wanted to see Tommy Kramer in there. They said when they heard that he was starting, they smiled a little. They said they don't like to play against Wade Wilson because he can run, and you're always afraid to go on that all-out pass rush. Nelson and Finney, the two backs. This is Darren Nelson, left side, and he's got some good yardage this time. Close to a first down, a gain of about nine and a half. Jim Wilkes made the stop. See what they did to Pat Swilling. So they get out of here and they get a good corner for him. That's Steve Jordan, 83, is blocked. All he does is stay with him, stay with him, stay with him, because the back is coming all the way across the backfield. Jordan did an excellent job of staying with him, driving him out, then he put him on his back, and Nelson cut to the inside. That guy, Steve Jordan, is one heck of a player. He's one of those guys that his motor only knows one way to run, and that's full RPM. Third and one. Not that much. Only about a foot. And again, Tom Dooley says, let's bring it out and measure and see if it's third and one instead of first and ten. I think if I were the Vikings, I would rather have that third down go for some kind of play fake and even come back on fourth down if I had to. Use that rep. Yeah, I would rather have that. Now, I got two decisions. One, I can go for it and pick it up. Or two, I can play fake and go for the big play. That's what I would do. And that, of course, has a great effect on your defensive philosophy. Yeah, Jim Moore, the thing is, you don't want to get up there and short yardage defense and sell out. That's one thing you can't Where's afford you to do. It's third and about a foot. I think this is a great time for a play fake, though. D.J. Dozier, their short yardage horse. You can see he has five touchdowns this year. Jerry Burns said he feels a lot more comfortable with him in there than he does with Darren Nelson. Rick Finney is the other back. It's Finney. Got the first down. Moves inside the 40. Gained three. Pat Swilling, number 56 on the bottom of the pile. But the Vikings have it in pretty good shape. They fell behind early. After a fumble on the exchange with Kramer in the center, the Saints took advantage, and they lead 7-3, but the Vikings are at the New Orleans 38, first and 10. Anderson moves in motion. Wilson gives on a delay. Fake throwing left. Gives to Nelson. No gain. Tony Elliott and Ricky Jackson. You know what that play was, Pat? That was the old Statue of Liberty. You don't see that anymore. Where the quarterback goes back like he's going to pass, then he hands off to the to the running back. But Darren Nelson is going to come from his left to his right. See, he does a spinner. You see, Wade Wilson goes like it's going to pass and hands backwards. Didn't have any effect on the Saints. That's the 1988 Statue of Liberty. I like that old kind. You know, the old kind that yeah. came out of the bucket. Here's Wilson chased out of the pocket by Clark. Gets it outside to Allen Wright. Stopped by Van Jakes for a pickup of nine. Hey, did you hear that shot that Ricky Jackson put on him? <laughs> This is the thing that the Saints were talking about yesterday. Is you get Wilson, you think you got him. Watch, there you are, you're free. Bruce Clark is coming in. He just makes a couple, a couple of quick step out to the outside, and boom, gets the first down on you. Again, that third and one situation. This time, it's a legitimate one. Wilson, one out of three. That completion just then. He fakes, and here's what you were looking for. Now Wilson trying to come out of the pocket, throws cross field incomplete. And 
and no flags on the play. Intended for Carl Hilton. Incomplete. It'll bring up fourth and one. I think the Vikings have already decided they're going to go for it. Again, I said the first time that I liked it because it was a little shorter. It was third and shorter. Jerry Burns is going to take time out here and think this one over. He's obviously thinking about whether or not he would like to go for it. I'm sure he'd like to, but whether he should or not. From the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, the NFC's wild card game between the Vikings and Saints. New Orleans leads 7-3 with 444 left in the first quarter. Fourth and one. And the Vikings called a timeout, talked it over, and their decision remains as it was. They're going for it. Wilson back in the pocket to throw and out of the pocket and chase. And he comes out of the pocket. And he's going to get away from everybody and steps out of bounds and the Saints will take over. He had no place to go. Great coverage by the Saints secondary. I tell you, I'm surprised when they had third down and just a little more than a yard that they didn't run on one of those two plays. Because both of those plays were great coverage by the Saints. The third down where they went to play pass was excellent coverage. There was no one to throw to. So now they come fourth down. They go to the pass again. Again, excellent coverage by the Saints. Wade Wilson had no one to throw to. And so Bobby Hebert on first and ten has Reuben Mays and Buford Jordan behind him. And they swap the position. Mays is 36. Jordan's the blocker. Now he's the ball carrier. Might have gotten a yard. And then knocked backwards by Chris Dolman, who was the first man to hit him. He's a very impressive guy, isn't he? Well, he is. Chris Dolman was a, a linebacker. And then at the end of the season last year, they had some linemen get hurt. And they said, why don't you just do it temporarily? He said, okay, temporarily. Look, we still have him as a linebacker. That was a year ago. And he came back to camp and he said, well, let's try it a little longer. And he's been a defensive lineman ever since. To start the line. Ruben Mays on a delay play, right side, got three yards. Minnesota Vikings said to us, we feel the thing we have to do to win is control the rush. And so far, they have. Well, and the other thing that they had to do was be able to score when they got down there. And, and they got down there, and you know, they don't look like they, they have a lot of confidence down there. And on that last drive, you had confusion with lack of confidence, and that has to be negative. You don't get much accomplished when you have confusion and lack of confidence, do you? Not when you mix them. A bear out of the shotgun. Hit from behind. Keith Millard, just as he let it go. Talk about your impressive guys. He's pretty impressive, too. Watch him. I tell you, there's a big, strong guy. We see him. He's just going to come right up the middle here, just get a push and be right into Bear's face. When you get a guy like Millard, who has good speed, good strength, he can take a couple of guys with him, and as he has a couple of guys hanging on, boom, he can get in there and grab the quarterback. Brian Hansen back to punt for the Saints. He's had somewhat of an erratic year. It will hang up for Anthony Carter. Dangerous man here. He's gone. Forget about it. so much for the special teams the Vikings go ahead 84 yards on the punt return by Anthony Carter and that's why Anthony Carter is an all pro he's a guy and even Bobby Hebert was telling us yesterday they played together in the USFL he said the thing about Carter is anytime he gets that football in his hands he's a threat to go all the way he said it can be on a kick return, it can be on a screen, on a long pass. He said he is one of the most dangerous men in football. 
That's and if you're playing against him. The thing about it is he doesn't look dangerous. He looks so frail. Well, he got those skinny little legs going for him. I think everyone feels sorry for him. They don't anymore. <laughs> Chuck Nelson hits the extra point. And the Vikings lead down 10 to 7. Tell you, when you get a run like that, you deserve a little oxygen. And you got to replenish that stuff. Watch these moves that he makes in this traffic. Watch him down there. He's making moves, moves, kick. Look, he planted with his right foot, jumped about three yards with his left, moved back left, right, picked up blocks. And when he gets there, there's a little smile on his face because he knows there's no one that's going to catch him. Anthony Carter had a great collegiate career, of course, at Michigan. A lot of people doubted his ability to catch the ball in traffic, but he has discounted all of those things that were said. Hey, Tommy Crane was saying last night, he said, I was really happy when we got him. And then he said, then he came to camp, and I looked at him and said, geez, that guy looks a little frail. They tried to start to feed him when he got to training camp. But he has been very durable and obviously very talented and can make some things happen. I think instead of feeding a guy like that, you just put a couple of bricks in his pockets when you weigh him, and then everyone's satisfied and you just let him be. 3.03 left to play in the first quarter. And the Vikings, after that 84-yard punt return by Anthony Carter, lead it 10-7. As so often happens, a very enthusiastic crowd became a very quiet crowd. Yeah, you could bring that automotive meter out now and it wouldn't register anything. Register a donut up there. They again bounce the kickoff. And again, Barry Word handles it. And he hammers out to about the 29. Walker Lee Ashley the stop word got it back 12 yards after he finally found the handle and the Saints will take over at their own 30. Well, I will say one thing about the Saints offensively is is they look out of sync. They look like they're a little jittery out there. Bobby Bear doesn't look like he's loosened up yet. Offensive linemen look a little tight. I think that I think that maybe sometimes for a playoff game you can get too high. Well, they all said yesterday, hey, we were ready to play last Monday. Today is the day, not last Monday. May, and the flag comes flying into the middle. Keith Millard on the bottom of the pile. May's got one, but this is probably going to be holding, as Tom Dooley would indicate, against the Saints. Holding, 63 offense, first down. They look unsure, the Saints do, about who's supposed to be in the game. That's right. Brad Edelman, the guy that was holding, was the guy that was blocking Keith Millard. As we said, Millard's one of those big 280-pound defensive linemen. Strong as a bull. You know, and, and, and if you're going to block him, you better get to him quickly. he got a big old set of arms on him. He's from my hometown, Pleasanton. A lot of big, in high school. A lot of big guys from your hometown. Yeah. Richard Moran. Here's a bear back to throw. Again, he's pressured. This time he throws the direction of Eric Martin incomplete. Out of bounds. Covered by Carl Lee. Again, he was under pressure. Well, what Bobby A. Bear likes to do is take either a three-step drop or a five-step drop. And then stand erect. Stand straight. He's six foot four. You see, step up there. Stand right in there. Don't move out right or left. And, of course, if you stand in there, the longer you hold the ball, eventually some guys in white jerseys are going to get there. Millard again. Second and 20. Report on Tommy Kramer is he has a little bit of a twinge in his neck. Could return if need be. Saints go with four wide receivers. This is not done for me. Come out of the pocket. This time he'll have some time. Gets it out to Mark Patterson. Carl Lee again 
the defender. Not enough, not nearly enough for a first down. A bear that time out of the pocket. Gain seven. They still need 13 for a first. I know what the Saints are trying to do because Jim Morris said yesterday, we would like to come out passing, start throwing the ball, make the Vikings think that we're going to pass, and then open up our running game. You know, just the opposite of that whole deal of establish the run to throw, yeah. establish the pass to be able to run. They again go with their four wide receiver setup. Minnesota leads New Orleans 10 to 7. The Louisiana Superdome. Matt Summerall with John Madden. The NFC wild card game. The Vikings and the Saints. The Vikings leading it 10 7. And on the move again. Wade Wilson is their quarterback. Anthony Carter. Hands of velvet. Wilson had it right on the money and look how he handles this ball. Well, you know, watch Carter coming to the inside from the top of the screen. He's just coming in in a slant, and you can hit him in any of those positions, but he doesn't wait for the ball to get to his body. You see how he just kind of gets it up there and just snaps it right out of the air. Carter comes wide to the right. This time, Leo Lewis goes wide left. Anderson and Nelson behind Wade Wilson. Semi rollout. Intended for Carter. He's going to be out of bounds anyway. It's incomplete. Dave Weimer was the nearest Saint. But Weimer was the corner playing off. The guy that helped was Ricky Jackson. See, as they had Weimer off of Carter, and then Jackson, a linebacker, working out underneath. And I think Wilson had to really throw that ball around Ricky Jackson. 
Poe comes in. And the Saints nickel package. They go with four down linemen now. There's Wilson. Blitz coming. Pass intercepted. And dropped by Johnny Poe. And they still chase it. Now this is one they might review. Tell you the guy that caused it on this end was Pat Swilling. He was the rusher that was right in Wilson's face and made him get rid of the ball. Alan Rice was the man who turned Poe upside down. Now they're saying incomplete. You got to come down with possession. The receiver did not have control angle. of the ball. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. We'll see there. Poe has to come down with it. Not. That, that was quite a spill anyway. It was like the spill from the second floor. But it's the same thing as a reception. You have to go up, have possession, come down with both feet and possession. And now, as I said, that's one that they'll probably look at again. Johnny Poe is number 25. It's up in the air, has the ball. Now he comes down. Actually, it was a collision with his own teammate, Van Jakes, that really turned him upside down like that, and they continue to review. I would think just from watching it here with the raw eyes that that it's not an interception. You can look at it now with the reverse eyes. Or you can stand on your head and look at it upside down. If you're Johnny Poe. And you still see the ball pop out. Jerry Burns and Jim Mora. Two guys who've done remarkable jobs this year. The Vikings with their replacement team didn't win a game. But with their regulars, they're at the top of the heap. Still, for the review. I'll show you the, the thing that made Wade Wilson throw it is watch Pat Swelling. He's here. He's going to hit. And then he comes and just as Wilson, just as he's getting ready to After hit, review, Wilson the throws the ball. The play will stand as called. Third down. See, that was the guy Wilson saw. He saw him coming, and he had to throw the ball. I think Swilling caused him to throw it then. First the replay, they watched the same stuff and said that it wasn't an interception. And they say, after review, the call and the play will stand as call. But still Viking ball, third and ten. They're at the New Orleans 38. Wilson, with a man in his face, gets it out to Darren Nelson. Nelson breaking three tackles that he might go all the way. Nelson at about the one foot line finally stopped by Johnny Poe. And he showed you why they fear him so much. Well, those are the two guys that we're talking about. And they're the two speed guys of the Vikings. Anthony Carter, he gets a big punt return. Darren Nelson gets a big run. These are two guys that, again, you don't have to throw the ball deep to. All you have to get the ball in their hands because they can both make things happen. They have good speed, good elusive movements that can get that ball up where you want it. They, I, would, I would somehow get it in their hands every play, either Carter or Nelson. Nelson sits down and Dozier and Finney come in by DJ Dozier. Knocked backward by Tony Elliott at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he even lost a yard. Thing is, watch the watch the Saints up there on top. They get the penetration. You see them, they're in there. They get to the Viking side of the ball, and there's no place for Dozier to go. But you see the first guy through there is 99, Tony Elliott. See 99? He's in the backfield. He's the first guy that gets there, and he's the guy that stops Dozier. They lost the yard, and it's second and goal from the two. Anderson and Dozier again. One of the 
St. Linebackers jumped offside. Appeared to be Joel Colbrand. Ricky Jackson, the defensive captain, arguing with Tom Dooley and the rest of the officials. But let's see. 33, encroachment of the defense, number 73, second down. Frank Warren. Look, Pat, this is what I think caused it. Watch Wade Wilson as he starts to call the plays. You see him move his left leg, cock his left leg there. I think that's what that's what the defense saw. They saw that movement, that foot movement. And then they're used to any movement you see, boom, you get across there. They've allowed only six rushing touchdowns all year. This was set up by the 37-yard pass completion to Nelson. They're out of sync this time as Dozier goes over the top and in, but a, a flag is down, and that one is going to be against Minnesota. second down again you see the quarterback's going to move his leg now that's usually to start the motion now the motion comes across that's the left tackle up there it's Gary Zimmerman number 65 he was the first guy that moved and he was the guy that they were going right in his hole too. the guy next to him moved a little bit and when you get so tense in a situation like this any movement Here's Wilson trying for the quarterback draw. Nothing doing as Jim Wolf stopped him after a gain of only one. Ricky Jackson on the assist. I don't know what kind of play that was. If it's a quarterback draw, Wilson should drop a little deeper to let things develop. You have to get back. Let that rush start up. Let things develop. Find a lane. He just went there too quickly. Just got anxious. That's what happened on the last three plays, third and goal from the five. The Vikings seem to self-destruct the closer they get to the Boy, goal line. When they get down here, they just can't seem to put people away. Here's Wilson back to throw. Up the middle, touchdown to his tight end, Steve Jordan. They're putting the Saints away right now. Touchdown pass from Wilson to Jordan, five yards. Well, they didn't self-destruct there. That's one thing about Wilson. I'll tell you, he zipped that thing in there because Steve Jordan really wasn't open. Watch Wilson. He's looking. He's looking. Now he sees him. Now watch him. Him put the mustard on that thing. Whack. I mean, he hit him right between two defenders that hit themselves. Right between Mills and Johnson. 16-7. Nelson makes it 17-7. Vikings lead by 10 with 11 minutes and 41 seconds left to play in the first half. You talk about throwing in something in a tight area. Look, defender, defender, whap, he zips that ball and how he got it between those two defenders. Look at that. I'll tell you too, John, that's a heck of a catch by Jordan with those two guys almost blocking his vision on both sides. Well, you know, you always talk about concentration for a receiver, and that's one thing that you practice. They call that a blur drill. You just throw the ball to receivers and have guys in front of them just moving their hands up and down. That time they had two linebackers shooting live bullets, so when you had to had to concentrate on right it. between Sam Mills and Johnson. Wade Wilson, that's having confidence in your arm. Line drive kickoff again at Barry Word. Word out to about the 29. Carl Hilton made the stop. We're at the Louisiana Superdome, the NFC's wild card game between the Saints and the Vikings. Minnesota, after trailing 7 0, came back and has scored two touchdowns and gotten a field goal. Wilson replaced Kramer, quarterback. Anthony Carter lit the fire with an 84-yard punt return for a touchdown. And the Vikings lead in total offense as well as the score. 17-7. 11-34 left in the first half. A lot of time left. But the Vikings have shown 
flag on the play again. Thomas made the stop for Minnesota. Gain of four by Reuben Mays, but that's going to be brought back. Holding 63 offense. First down. Man, that's Brad Edelman again now. That's his second holding call. He's having a tough time in here. He's the guy that's blocking Keith Millard, and Keith Millard is having a good start in his first half. Yes, Brad Edelman. Millard was all fired up last night. He said to you, you know, the two games that you broadcast, I've been hurt both times. Being a hometown friend of yours, he'd like to display his wares in front of you as well as the rest of the audience. Okay, he's a good player. He's a number one draft choice of the Vikings out of Washington State. And he's one of those guys who plays in the USFL. Mays, right side. Tripped up by the last man, Joey Browner. After a gain of nine. We talked about the Saints and the contribution that the USFL players made to their team. What about the Vikings? Look at that. I mean, if you just take that top guy Anthony Carter and say that's the only thing you got out of the league that was pretty good but look they got Keith Millard who's a second team all pro and down at the bottom there was Gary Zimmerman right he's an all pro this year and perhaps their best lineman second down have got to get that offensive line and that group entirely together and give a bear some time Lonzel Hill was the intended receiver are we the defender they might decline this one holding number 63 the to climb. Right there. Hey, that's Brad Unholm again that's his third one watch him right here and you see again he's blocking Keith Millard watch Millard got off the ball quicker than Edelman did he beat him to the chart Millard got by him and I think he had to grab him with that left arm to slow him up and I think that's what happened but again it was that quick move getting beaten when the ball was snapped and bringing that arm up over third and 12 they do decline spread formation four wide receivers for the Saints. A bear by Dolman and he dropped the football. The Saints got it back. Brad Edelman saw it on the ground and made the recovery. You know one thing we see more watch Chris Dolman coming from the backside but as these rushers come from the backside what they're going to do is grab with one hand Watch, he's going to grab and then strip at the ball. Grab with the left hand and try and, boom, knock that ball out with the right hand. That's the way backside pass rushers do it now. Grab with one and grab, strip with the other. Picture perfect pass rushing by Chris Dolman. I don't think he wants to go back to linebacker. Hanson. Good kick this time and Anthony Carter. Slips one tackle. Got away from three more people, finally tripped up by Johnny Poe. Talk about an exciting player. Diagram Anthony Carter. It's <laughs> a good start. 17-7. First half, 9-18 remain. Joel Hilgenberg with an ice pack and a bandage on his left arm. But sometimes you just have to go back to basics and drain that thing. Hey, you always talk about an arm being pumped up. That's how you get it back down after you pump it up. Wilson outside of Carter. First down, Minnesota. And out of bounds, stop the clock. Bam, Jakes. Pick up of 12. Jakes, the defender. Look at Carter there and those skinny legs he got. He really doesn't have, I mean, those are probably stuffed with a couple stockings in there, too. <laughs> in fact, they call them ostrich legs and, and everything. You wouldn't want to hang that sock on your uh, on your fireplace for Christmas, would you? 
Did he get any gifts? I, a, I don't know. If you were a coach, coach or something. If you were a coach, you might like to find that in your stocking. No, I'd take what's in it. Yeah. yeah. Here's Wilson going for Carter. Oh, that was very nearly a touchdown. Van Jakes on the coverage. That would have been similar to the catch that he made against the Redskins. Well, we can watch the Carters go deep and stuff, but let's watch when a nose tackle goes through. I mean, there's a center on him, a guard on him. They just take a boom, just put him right on his back. He didn't see the pass get off. He didn't see whether Carter caught it or not. He just lays in the ground and listens. And he trots off the field because he only plays on rundowns anyway. Your nose tackle in a dome, you spend a lot of time looking at the Raptors. the line of scrimmage lost the yard Pat Swilling Vaughn Johnson Van Jakes has come out on the sideline place has been taken by Reggie Sutton you know that's the area that if they're going to work on someone in that Saints secondary it would be Van Jakes because that's the area that all the other teams have worked on that's what Jim Mora said yesterday you know we got a weak spot. That's where it is. And the other folks are going to see Carter on him. The other folks are not dumb. Wilson has Leo Lewis inside the Saint 25 to about the 23. Ricky Jackson, Brett Maxey made the stop, but not soon enough. Watch this, Pat. That's the same type of throw that Wade Wilson made down in the end zone to Jordan. Watch that. The zone. You see, there's two guys on either side, and crap, he just zipped it right between the two to Leo Lewis. I mean, that's confidence in your arm when you can do that, because a lot of guys would see those two linebackers and not even throw the ball. I didn't realize Wade Wilson had that kind of an arm, because we haven't seen that much of it. He can throw it. Here's Nelson. Gained only one stop by Sam Mills. in the game. Watch Sam Mills. See those linebackers? They have those goofy eyes anyway. They kind of got that smile because they know, hey, there's going to be some action here in a minute. Sam Mills just watched Darren Nelson all the way. Boom! Right down the line with him. Made that open field tackle. Sam Mills basically a two-down player. He plays only on running situations. Then they take him out. He's out now. And Sam Mills and Darren Nelson are about the same height. They back to throw has time and again zips it to Jordan and he'll be right at the 10 yard line a gain of 12 and Wade Wilson has been almost perfect and he's throwing those balls that, that have defenders on him I mean it's not like he's throwing them away from defender Brett Maxey was all over Steve Jordan on that one the one before that he zipped between two linebackers the touchdown to Jordan, uh, Jordan, he zipped between two linebackers. So he's throwing it into defense and being successful with it. It's first and goal at the 10, and look at the number of offensive plays, 33 to 12 in favor of the Vikings. It's an option, and it's a touchdown. Allen Rice, the thrower, Anthony Carter, the catcher. Here he Alan Rice had no idea where that ball was going. He was on his way down when he let it go, and it was a strike. And Anthony Carter just slipped right through the defense. Watch this. It's a run pass. Pitch out to Rice. Rice is looking. If you're going to throw it, only look for one guy, and that's Anthony Carter. But I don't know how that Saint defense could let him run through them like that. I mean, why on any defensive play you shouldn't say, let's watch Carter. Nelson trying to make it 24 to 7. Scribner is the holder. And it's good. This is a heck of a throw. Watch Carter and how he gets open. Well, you know, he's coming in like he's going to block. You see, like he's cracking. Waymer went up for the run. Then Carter kind of started off slowly. Boom, just zipped right by him. Made it look so easy. And it's 24-7. The seven 
The Vikings lead the Saints. Seven plays, 54 yards. They kept it three minutes and eight seconds. And they take a commanding lead. The same thing that happened to that water bag a minute ago has happened to this crowd. They cut out the bottom and there's no noise. Well, you know, and part of that, or a big part of it, is the Viking defense. The Saints have only 28 yards total offense. 14 rushing and 14 passing. And when you only have that in the first half, there's really nothing to cheer about. Again, Nelson drills it. Barry Ward handles it. Everyone's been like that. Word this time gets a good return outside the 35 to the 38. Chris Martin made the stop. He returned it 23 yards. Let's watch the touchdown again. They're going to start out with a pitch here to Rice. Now, Waymer, who's covering Carter, is here, looks in. He comes up to stop the run. Carter comes by like it's going to be a plot. He looks in like it's a run. Boom, he just sneaks right by him. So watch Waymer up here at the bottom of the screen. See what he sees run? Well, now everyone lets Carter run right by him because they think it's a run. That's his touchdown pass. Scott Studwell made the stop. Gain of eight. I think Abear is looking up at Keith Millard there, and he's saying, hey, let's start getting this guy off of me. There's Pat Swilling. He's coming from the backside. He gets him from the back. Millard is right in front of him. And I'll tell you, he's, he's wondering what the heck's going on here. Second down. It ain't two, and they see Ruben Mays after it. And he doesn't get it. Only one stop by Millard. Yeah, you know, we talked about Tommy Kramer being hurt. Bobby Abear also has a bad knee. And now Reuben Mays is hurt. You know, I... Reuben Mays again with another good year, but down at the moment. So we'll take a timeout while they attend to Reuben Mays. Five minutes and 17 seconds left in the first half. And over on the sideline, here's what happened, John. Hey, you can see Keith Millard is coming here, and he's going to come in, and he hits Reuben Mays right on the right knee. Watch him as he comes in to tackle him there, gets the right knee right there. In fact, Millard and Mays were teammates at Washington State. Third and two. for the first down and a pickup of three and even a first down excites the crowd after the way the Vikings have dominated since the early, the well, early course, touchdown. That, was, that was only their second first down of the day they, this offensive line of the Saints really in his first half hasn't been able to handle the defensive line of the Vikings Dalton Hilliard replaced Mays and he's the lone setback away from a bunch of pursuit and gets it to Hobie Brenner. Brenner to the Viking 20. Stopped by John Harris finally. Good effort by Hebert. I think the Saints have finally decided that they just can't let Hebert stand in that pocket. That they got to move him out. Here they bring him out on a bootleg, let him move around, buy a little time, and then he can find Hobie Brenner or someone up the field. But the way he's getting that rush up the middle, he just can't stand in that pocket. If he's going to get any time, he's, he's going to have to buy it on his own ability. Because they really, as you said, haven't gotten him blocked up front. And remember, he has a, a tender knee himself. First down, Saints, the Minnesota 26. Buford Jordan and Dalton Hilliard. Complete. It was Eric Martin. Hebert had the ball there. He was hit by Isaac Holt, and it's incomplete. He 
can just see Eric Martin, probably the best receiver of the Saints. He's just waiting there, waiting there. He caught the ball. Hey, Isaac Colt did an excellent job of coming up and knocking it out of there. Martin had a tough thing because he couldn't duck or duck. He had a stand right there because if he moved too much, he'd be out of bounds. So it brings up a second and 10 from the 26. Minnesota 24, New Orleans 7. Calvin here, ball play to the left, slips one tackle, fights his way down inside the 25 to about the 23, stopped by Scott Studwell. You see Chris Dolman in there. He was telling us last night that when he was a linebacker, then he moved to defensive line, and he started getting some sacks. He's a leading sacker in the Viking team. Then he started getting double teamed. He said it was frustrating, and Floyd Peters told him, he said, it's easier to beat a double team. He said being double teamed is good. <laughs> it's respect. I'm not sure about it being easier. <laughs> understand it, but it's something the coach would say, hey, it's good. Yeah. It's good. You like to be double teamed. Here's Abair. Incomplete intended for Lonzel Hill. It looked as if he had room to run. And the crowd thought either that or that there was pass interference. And here comes Morton Anderson. Carl Lee made the hit. Hey, you can see Bobby Abair walking up point before the ball got there. I would think that Lonzel Hill and Bobby Bear were both right. No review, and we're looking at Morton Anderson from 40 yards out. He's been perfect from this distance. And he is again. 24 to 6. 24 to 10, I beg your pardon. 306 left to play in the first half. watch that one again and see if Lonzel Hill did get hit before the ball got there. Again, he can get there the same time of the ball, but it looks like contact was well before the ball got there. There can't be too much question about that. I would say the Saints have a legitimate complaint. But that'll do you nothing. I mean, that's the complaint the legitimate. So what? Not now. They've already run another play and yeah, this is a playoff. I'll review it now. This one, yeah, you take your six thousand dollars and go home. The other guys take their six thousand dollars and go on. Minnesota wins. Of course, they would go to San Francisco. If the Saints win, they go to Chicago. The report on Reuben Mays, if you look at Bobby Abair, is that he has strained knee ligaments. They'll take a closer look time or pretty soon and we don't know whether or not he'll be able to return or not but of late in that running back situation for the Saints Dalvin Hilliard has been moving more and more into the forefront the scoring drive for the Saints eight plays 40 yards Anderson finished it off with a 40 yard field goal he's about to kick off what some strength he's got in that way. That's three times he's kicked off, and all three of them have either been deep into the end zone or out of the end zone. And I'll tell you, the two groups that love him is one, the kickoff coverage team. They always want that kicker to kick it in the end zone. And the defense, they want to come out there and be able to start on that 20. The Saints defensive players waving their arms and asking, hey, we need some help. 24 to 10, the Vikings lead. You make noise when they got the ball. When we got the ball, you be quiet. Wade Wilson going right to work, looking for Carter. Chased by Clark and down by Tony Elliott and Clark. What do you call that thing, John? Automometer meter. Yeah, they got it way up in the red on that play. It's it scheduled. It was like a, uh, a record on the meter. But I'll tell you one thing. He did have Anthony Carter wide open out here to the left. 
The guy covering him, Van Jakes, fell down. I don't know what Wade Wilson was looking at. But Jakes fell down on Carter, and Carter was wide open. Can you hear? Second and 14. The meter's in double red. Wilson gives on a draw play. a great word whatever you call that thing but what it means is how loud it is well look at that i don't know anything about the top two i don't know about that jet or that rock punch and stuff but the superdome today when these guys get excited are right up with the top two i know about the top one and that's loud yeah. i know you don't know <laughs> seconds left to play in the first half. The Vikings lead it, and they have just taken a timeout. Well, one thing that you can't do in this situation, third down, you like to go to the shotgun. But with this noise, there's no way the Vikings can go to a shotgun. Unless they go to one of those silent counts, and then if they do that, then the defense again has the advantage. Well, Pat Swilling was explaining that yesterday when we talked to him, saying that if we get the crowd into it enough so that they can't hear the snap signal, then they have to go on movement. And if they go on movement, we have just the same advantage that they have. In fact, we have more. That gives them a big point. You see, the Vikings aren't in the shotgun either. Wilson back to throw. That'll turn that meter down. Well, yeah, that's what you have to do. I mean, that's one thing that the Vikings have done today in this first half. They have two big play guys, Anthony Carter, Darren Nelson, and they've gotten the ball to them. Two minutes remaining in the first half at the Louisiana Superdome. Down for the Vikings. Here's Darren Nelson. Let's watch how he got open. Van Jakes is here. He's covering him. But here comes Anthony Carter. He comes in, boom, and picks him right here. Whap! And that lets Darren Nelson get by him. Watch Carter, the outside guy. Here comes Jake. He's going out to cover him. Whap! Right there. He gets picked, and that leaves Darren Nelson open. That's not a legal play either, but they didn't see it, so then it's legal. Legal because they got away with it. The old pick. Third down. What the heck? They're making a lot of noise. Pick him. Wilson back in the pocket. Now chased out of the pocket. Gets the ball out incomplete. Intended for Allen Rice. Took a shot in the back from David Waymer. Ricky Jackson was the man in pursuit. Stick with us at the half. Brent will be with longtime St. Great, who suffered as much as anyone here. Archie Manning and locker room reports. Irv Cross and Will McDonough will be outside the two locker rooms. And bring us up to date. Archie Manning played quarterback here after so many great years. He went to the Vikings after a brilliant collegiate career at Ole Miss. Second and ten. Wilson again chased by Schwilling and down he goes. The fifth sack. the type of game this is going to be. The Vikings are going to try and get the ball to either Anthony Carter or Darren Nelson, and the Saints are going to try to get to Wilson before he can get the ball to those two guys. There, Pat Swilling was the first guy in. He made him bring the ball down, and of course then he couldn't get out and get anything going. He was talking about how he thought he could work against Zimmerman yesterday. He said, I think I can get him started wide and then come inside, and that's what he did then. That's exactly what he did, and you look at this first half, the Viking quarterbacks have been sacked five times, hurried six times, been knocked down twice after they threw it, had one batted ball and one fumble. That's a lot of stuff that happened to that position in the first half. Especially when you lead 24 to 10, in spite of all that. 
or one of those or seven of those points of course were Anthony Carter on the on the uh, big punt return for a touchdown. Minnesota third down and 17 looking for their sixth third down conversion in a row and if you can keep doing that you'll stay ahead. Wilson again flushed out of the pocket sets up the screen pass to right and the Saints led by Swilling again stop him and they call their last time out gain of eight and Minnesota's Bucky Scribner will have to come on and punt well that's the, the thing the Saints want to take a timeout now they have no more timeouts but of course after this punt they will get another free timeout at change of possession had a lot of success moving the ball on on offense so you wonder if maybe that last minute can get the Minnesota defense out of that big pressure defense and into something a little softer for them. Fourth down for the Vikings. This is a Saint timeout and their last one. Mel Gray the dangerous Mel Gray. Gray fumbled the first one today, and that's how the Vikings got their first score. Would you call that a fumble? It just hit him in the shoulder. He signaled fair catch, and then I don't know what happened. I think he lost the ball in the Raptors. I do too, because it wasn't a muff, was it? No. He never even tried to catch it. I think it was just a misjudgment. Saints are coming after it. Stribner gets rid of it. This one. He was lucky that time that the same thing didn't happen. You know, the only other thing I can think is someone lost their shoe right on the line of scrimmage. That was right there where the ball was snapped. The other thing is Scribner is a left-footed kicker. And that ball could be coming down at different angles, and Mel Gray may not be used to it. Because that is the second one that he misjudged. That was Walker Lee Ashley who threw the shoe back there right on the line of scrimmage. I mean, he just he just left it pop. He just popped right out of that shoe and ran about 45 yards down the field. That's what you call coming out of the blocks. <laughs> First and 10 New Orleans Saints. Dalvin Hilliard is the setback back where they bear. The Saints operate out of the spread. They bear drops it off to Hilliard. Hilliard still on his feet and still on his feet. And doesn't look like much, but the fact that he got out of bounds, bought some time, he was hit by Joey Browner, a gain of only four, but he does stop the clock. Well, the Saints aren't really strong in this area because the one thing they lack in, the, in their receivers is speed. They don't have any speed outside or none at tight end, so they don't have that deep threat that can go get that long ball. That would account for, although today has been the exception, that, of course, would account for they're leading the league in time of possession. But they can't go deep. They can't go for the big bomb. To their credit, they haven't tried it. The one thing they do have, though, is that great kicker that they only have to play on a 50-yard field. They there outside of Lonzel Hill. That'll be a safe first down. And they'll go hurry up. when they get this play off if the Vikings get back on side. Millard taking his time. They have a minute. Stay there. Intercepted by John Harris. To the 35. And it puts the Vikings right back in business. Now that's different because the clock stops now. I think Bear was trying to go. I think he was trying to go to Eric Martin there. Eric Martin just stopped right in the middle. John Harris jumps in front of him and gets the interception. Now that stops the clock. Now the Vikings do have two timeouts. Now the situation changes. Wow. Eric Martin, as he's coming in here, John Harris is looking at Martin out of his left eye and the quarterback out of his right eye. Now we talked earlier about the Saints 
great special teams and the Vikings inability to put people away here's a chance to do it Swilling has Wilson get away from him and now Bruce Clark Willing was there first Clark and Wilkes finished him off six well, sacks Swilling is up here he's going to be the first guy then Wilkes is the second guy Wilkes is the guy who finally gets him what Swilling comes from the outside they're trying to block him with Darren Nelson you can't do that you can't block it, him with a bat then the next guy in there is Wilkes you see Swilling go for the swipe though he was the guy who said he tackles with his left hand and swipes with his right hand. He did it, but he missed with the left, and Brett, he missed with the right. That's Bob Snelker over talking to Tommy Kramer. I didn't see anything happen to Wilson, but Kramer with his helmet on, loosening. Wilson over on the sideline, and again, I didn't see anything happen to him. We'll check. Well, he was sacked, and maybe, maybe they just got upset with him for taking a sack. They're figuring that he should have gotten rid of the ball because they were in or close to field goal position. Jerry Burns said a lot of the fans and media have been saying in Minnesota, you can't play, quarterback can't play with a gun to his head. That's too much pressure. Heck, that's what this game is all about. Pressure. Throw a screen pass. And almost have it intercepted. Ricky Jackson was there, read the thing perfectly from the beginning. It's a loss of two. Alfred Anderson was the intended receiver. Jackson might have hurt his right horn. I'll tell you, he almost had the interception, as you said. That was a weak looking screen pass by Kramer. It looked like the last shot out of a Roman candle just kind of plopped out there. Hung in the air for a long time. Looked like all the powder might have been gone. <laughs> Ricky Jackson had to decide, do I play it safe and get the tackle, or do I go for the spectacular one? He played it safe. Third down, and they just run Darren Nelson straight ahead. Flag down on the play. Pat Swilling made the stop, but there's a penalty marker down. And the half can't end on a penalty. Another flag is down. to be a defensive penalty there was one down and then a second one came out later so that could be a double penalty we have 12 men on the defense we will have an untimed down third down an untimed down i don't know if i've ever heard that before well we're getting a lot of stuff here we had the the half can end on a on a uh, defensive penalty so then the, the clock is out, so they don't start the clock again. Wade the, Wilson's well, out. You get Wade Wilson back in, Kramer out, untimed play, a lot of stuff. This goes into the category of freebies. Take a shot, right? Now they got the three lined up in the left. Throw it up. Jones and Leo Lewis all together. 
Johnny Poe was number 25. He goes up for it. Now the ball's in the air. Now there's no other Saints that are able to go for it. Jones ends up with it. Look at all those Saints surrounding it, though. Look, they got a whole group there. I think they're reviewing this play for some reason, Pat. After review by the replay official, the play will stay in this call. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Hassan Jones caught it after he tipped it to himself while he was lying on his back. You know, that could be the play that finishes the, the, the Saints. I know you can come from behind on things, but that all started because they had 12, 12 men on, on the defense. Field. So they replay the down with no time left on the clock. They hit the extra point. And at the half, it's 31-10. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Minnesota Vikings, 31. The New Orleans Saints, 10. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football Conference Wild Card Game is sponsored by Toyota, setting the standard for quality and value. Michelob, so exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. And by the American Express card, don't leave home without it. Here come 20 points. Detroit defeated San Francisco at Kizar Stadium back in 1957. 31-27. Tom Tracy had a big second half to lead the Lions. But we've already seen the longest punt return in playoff history. That 84-yarder by Anthony Carter. Stranger things have happened. stop you know, if we're going to see the Saints come back or attempt to come back they have to start controlling the line of scrimmage they didn't in the first half the Viking defensive line whipped the Saint offensive line I think it's as simple as that and on the first play they started doing the same thing particularly Millard and Dolman although they all contributed gotten him blocked anybody all day yeah I think Millard knows their snap count watch him here he's there on Edelman now now he's getting up and he's beating him to the snap see he's getting that left arm up over and beyond him before Edelman is getting set he's getting in the backfield before the same offensive line is moving third down and three four call it Blitz. They don't do much of that. The ball is deflected and very nearly intercepted. It was hit by Henry Thomas. Sort of a homecoming for him. Dolman almost had close to a touchdown. If he could have found the handle, he could have been gone. Well, Dolman is lined up on the left side now. Usually lines up on the right side. And then he drops out like he's going to be a linebacker. And then Henry Thomas comes up the middle, gets his right hand up, and Dolman almost gets a reflection. And reflection. Anthony Carter back deep. Anson to kick. And that was going to be a fake punt, I think. It looked like they snapped it to the short man, who was Dave Weimer. And if it gets the Vikings, it'll be a first down. Right. They'll take them any way they can. Encroachment, number 53 defense, first down. Watch number 44, Dave Weimer. He moves a little to his right. And then, then that's the thing that set off. I don't know if he was going to take it, but I don't he, know either. He jumped in front of the snap, and the snap hit him. He was starting to celebrate. And then, yeah, he, he jumped to the yeah. right. Then when he jumped to the left, bah, he got hit with a ball. First down, Saints. Alvin Hilliard. Outside 35. 
five, a pickup of three. Henry Thomas again on the stop. You know, Henry Thomas, as you said, it's a homecoming. He's from LSU, a rookie, but he came in here and, and, and started for the Saints right in training camp. And uh, just from day one, from rookie camps and the offseason, they liked this guy. I know Floyd Peters said he never played like a rookie. He played like a veteran from day one. The third and two. Howard and Thomas again made the stop. I think the Vikings, when they got Henry Thomas, thought he was going to be a backup for a while, but he became a starter right from, as you said, right from the opening day of training camp. Well, he beat out Tim Newton. Right. Uh, Tim Newton was the starter, and he beat him out in training camp, and he's really an excellent player against the run. Interesting thing with their defense. They're moving Millard now to right end and taking Dolman and putting him on the left side. Well, whatever they're doing, whatever the rhythm is, they're doing it successfully. Hands and back to punt. Good kick this time. Faces Anthony Carter back to his own eight yard line. about those athletes like Anthony Carter they always seem aware of where everybody is and what the situation is and he saw he couldn't go anywhere and he tried it out of bounds wins Reuben Mays minus his shoulder pads over on the sideline he sprained knee ligaments checked him at the half and it doesn't appear he'd be back Anderson and Nelson behind Tommy Kramer now back the Minnesota quarterback. Here's Nelson. Almost off to the races and a first down and a fumble. And Minnesota got it back after a gain of 12 by Darren Nelson. Zimmerman made the recovery. Hey, that's an alert offensive tackle and Gary Zimmerman. He's a left tackle. Watch a delay from the eye formation. Good hole. Good lead block. Heck of a move there. One thing that Jerry Burns said he always worries about Darren Nelson is fumbling. He said he has small hands and it's just easy to knock the ball out of there. But I don't know. I, I would take that because I think I think he's only fumbled twice all year and lost it. But that's why he uses Dozier other than to give him some experience when they get down close. Nelson again. Picked up six yards. That's the kind of things the Vikings would like to do. Gene Atkins made the stop. On the ground and burn up some time. Well, and I'm sure he wants to do those two things is keep the ball or get the ball in these guys' hands. Look at this. Nelson has 82 yards. Carter has 159 yards, receptions, and kick returns. These two guys have been 57% of that Viking offense. And over 200 yards. might have another St. First Down. Struggle for five. Tackle finally by Sam Mills. Uh, that'll come close to moving the sticks. You know, the interesting question to me, Pat, is one, Wade Wilson must be saying, what do I have to do? <laughs> what, what do you want from a guy? I mean, they come off the bench and I did all those things. And look at that, 11 out of 18, 199 yards, two touchdowns. And I don't start the second half. There's nothing our information is from the Vikings. Nothing physically wrong with Wade Wilson. Just the gut feeling again. Dozier. Left side and another five-yard gain. But you know, it could be that Jerry Burns just wants to get Tommy Kramer some playing time. And 
If they win here, then they go on to play the 49ers next week, and then he could have either guy, kind of have them both ready. Well, you could see why you pointed out early in the game when he fumbled a couple of snaps early, Kramer, that he did look rusty. Yeah, he looked a little jumpy, a little rusty, and, and that's going to happen. You know, you, you can practice. He splits the practice time with Wilson, but that's not the same as game day. No matter how long you play. Nelson again. He's got another Minnesota first down. Stopped by Vaughn Johnson. You know, you go back. Uh, last Tuesday, the Vikings had an extra day to get ready for this game because they played on Saturday, the Saints on Sunday. Just speculation, I don't know anything, that maybe Jerry Burns was playing a little game with the Saints. And he said, we're going to start Tommy Kramer, Wilson, when we need him. Maybe the Saints just took a sigh of relief. They sort of looked like they might have. They got ready for Kramer instead of Wilson. And thinking that Kramer's going to be that sitting duck, and then Wilson comes in, runs around, and gets a big play. All right. Nelson left side for three. Stop by Jim Wilkes. First was Wilkes. You know what I like about Darren Nelson is he enjoys playing the game. You know, I mean, he's out there, he has, he has spirit, he has fun, a smile on his face, glimmer in his eye, a bounce in his walk. And, you know, it's, it's that part of football. It's not the drudgery. And he's not afraid to go inside. You know, you think little Darren Nelson, he'll run that ball inside as effectively as outside. Remember Thanksgiving Day. Cool. He popped a trap in there. Right. This is the man in motion. Kramer gives on that statue of liberty to Nelson again. He hammers to the 35, picked up three, stopped by Mills. It'll bring up a third down for Minnesota. Darren Nelson is so tough here. You can see he has to tape his pants on. He's playing right out of his pants. But if he does a little spinner, and then here, that's how the statue of liberty is. Watch him as he starts here. As he starts up there, he's going to fake like he's going left. Look, then he does the spin, then they fake the pass, hand to him, back off. Then the linemen pull and get out in front of him. It didn't work, but it's a good-looking play. You got a spinner, a fake pass, pull. A lot to talk about. <laughs> Third and four. Kramer lofts it out incomplete, intended for Nelson. Out of field goal range, Sam Mills put the heat on Kramer. Made him hurry the throw. Here comes Sam Mills. Now, Kramer, he really didn't get hit until after he threw it, but he knew he was going to get it. So he just wanted to get rid of that ball, and then he went into his role. Bucky Scribner, number 13, comes on. I'll tell you, those left-footed punters are tough for a punt return. I mean, the ball spins the opposite way, and I'll bet you that's what this guy's having trouble with. Gray back deep for the Vikings. Jerry Burns... We asked him about his punter last night, what the situation was. He said it's going to be Cookie Gilchrist. <laughs> and then he said, I don't know why I call that guy Bucky Scribner Cookie Gilchrist. I can't figure that one out either. <laughs> out of bounds. Scribner's punt goes out. And just outside the 13, only a kick of 21 yards. Thirty-one ten. 647 left to play in the third quarter at the Superdome. The Vikings in control. The NFC wild card contest between Minnesota and New Orleans dominated by Minnesota. If the Vikings win, they will play the San Francisco 49ers. And the Redskins journey to Soldier Field and play the Bears in Chicago the next day. We'll be there. Now they lead 31-10, Minnesota does. Saints have the ball with 647 left to play in the third quarter. 14-yard line. Now they're going to get in the position where they have to throw almost every down. Hebert gets it out to Baldwin Hilliard. And Hilliard close to first down yardage. Joey Browner made the stop. Bobby Hebert had a tender knee coming in. See what happened. They, one thing, you know, the, the Viking defensive lineman 
they really don't play run. And of course, when they get ahead, you know they're not going to play run. They get up on the line of scrimmage, get that right foot back, pin their ears back, and go after the quarterback on every play. And that's the way they like to play. That's when it's fun being a defensive lineman. chance the Saints should come back and win this game they would go to Chicago on January the 10th to play the Bears and the Redskins would go on January the 9th to play San Francisco a bear limps out Wilson comes in a Wilson who brought the Saints back a couple of times this year after they were down second and one Very short. Hilliard is the lone setback, and Wilson's going to put it up. He gets it out to his tight end, John Tice. Tice hammered out of bounds in front of the Viking bench after a gain of 10. And a sink first down. I tell you, Bobby Abear really took a beating today because not only the times he was sacked, but it seemed like every time he threw, he was getting knocked down. He's one of those guys that just stands and stands in there. And I think he's one of those guys that's a real tough guy, and he, 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 he can take those beatings, and I think it just got to him today. And I think this is a smart move, whether Abraham had to come out or not, to bring Dave Wilson in. Looks like they're working on his eye. Not necessarily his bad knee. Wilson. Incomplete. They cut him down, and here comes the flag. Intended for Lonzel Hill. So I think Carl Lee cut Lonzel Hill before the ball got there. Watch 39. You see him coming in. You see at the bottom. Yeah, he just undercut him. A deal like that in the NBA, they'd give him two shots for that. And there'd be a fight. And oh, yeah, here they give him about 15 Best yards. Defense, number 39 defense. First down. That's worth 20 yards for the Saints. They need a shot in the arm. The old undercut in the NFL is a 20-yard deal. That's not bad. Remember earlier, Lonzel Hill didn't get that one he thought was pass interference. Go on a quick count. This is Dalton Hilliard. Inside the 30 to about the 28. He picked up six before Scott Studwell hit him, knocked the ball loose. But it was after he was down. You know, that's another thing about changing the quarterback. Pat, they have a different cadence. They have a different inflection. I had the feeling that the the linemen of the Vikings had a Bears count. Especially, especially Millard. Yeah, he looked like he was in their huddle with them. Second out of four. Picked off at the last second. Was he in bounds? Yes. Interception. I tell you, Brenner, Brenner did have it. It was in his hands and it, in his right hand. It was a high pass, just knocked the ball up in the air. Reggie Rutland is the man who came up with the interception. And so the Vikings will take over. At Summerall, John Madden. Here is that interception after the deflection by Brenner. Watch his feet. You know, it doesn't look like Reggie Rutland, number 48, has both feet. He doesn't have the ball yet. Now he has the ball. There's one foot. And the second foot, I think, is out. Well, let's look at it from another angle. I think the officials just decided to look at this in replay here. Here's control. One There's foot. one foot. The second foot's out. That's not an interception. Oh. Nope. I bet they give the ball back to the After Saints because that one is pretty clear. The play will stay in this call. First down. <laughs> I don't know. They, they're reviewing the same pictures. That's one, one foot in and one foot out no matter how you look at it. First down, Minnesota. They say the evidence is not conclusive. 
lead and the clock is running and running against the New Orleans Saints in their their great dream season and today has turned into a nightmare second down and five Vikings with the ball at their own 22 boy you can't take anything away from them Tommy Kramer the quarterback Anthony Carter that's a catch and Jake's on the coverage gain of 12 in the Minnesota first down. There's Bob Schnelker you just saw on the sideline. He's the offensive coordinator of these Vikings. You see him. He's sending in the play there with Darren Nelson. One of the few offensive coordinators that calls the plays from the sideline. I tell you, he's doing an excellent job today. In fact, we were talking last night, John. These two guys, the two offensive coordinators, well, these two teams are maybe the only two in the league who stay on the sidelines and not up in the press box. Yeah, most of them are up there where they have their notes and everything spread out. They got monitors and everything. Almost an interception by Ricky Jackson. Wilkes put the pressure on Kramer. Bear, by the way, took a finger in the eye and should be able to return. He's down there talking to Eric Martin, of the top wide receiver of the of the Saints. They'll be talking about what they did or what they can do when they get a shot again. Martin didn't look like he was listening, though, did he? No. It looked too interesting. Rice was the running back. It's Kramer to throw it. He has Carter. And that's a catch. And he did a heck of a job to get his feet down and bounds. He does a heck of a job with everything he does. Anthony Carter, I mean, you see he has the ball here. There's one foot down, and he has to get the right foot down. I guess he does. That's knowing your field. I mean, when you can, when you can get it down that fine, uh, you are a knowledgeable guy. You know, when he was in the USFL, he played with the Oakland Invaders, and his receiver coach was Fred Blitnikoff. And he does a lot of the things. He said he learned a lot from Fred Blitnikoff, and he does a lot of those little things like Fred Blitnikoff. Well, they are reviewing this catch. His right toe might have been out of bounds. Well, they gave one to the Vikings on the interception. I tell you, that looks like it's you're just talking about. That's not nearly as close as the other one. You're talking about millicentimeters. Right foot on the white. I don't know, white shoe on white. I mean, that looks like white on green to me. From here, but I thought the other one, the guy was out. As I look here, this one looks like he's in. Yeah, he's Further review by the replay official. The play will stand as called. First down. Well, the Vikings got two. I think one they deserved. I think Carter deserved that one. I think the interception, I didn't think that was in. Right at midfield, then. First and 10, Minnesota. Less than three minutes left to play in the third quarter. The Vikings lead 31 to 10. Here's Darren Nelson. First down and more, a pickup of nine. Darren Nelson's one of those guys who sort of disappears on the other side of the field and all of a sudden he pops out for a gain of nine and a first down. Did you hear his sideline cheer him? Gene Atkins, number 28, they came up to hit him and Darren Nelson went Pop! and gave him a forearm. We see what I like about him. He always has a smile on his face. You know, this this is a game and it should be fun. Sometimes it gets too much business in it and too much politics in it and too serious and when you can still have fun with it, then that's the way it should be. Hand off is to Rice. And that'll be another Viking first down as Rice got three. Pat Swilling stopped him. Well, there was a big sign in the St. Locker Room yesterday when we were there. Big letters said never, 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 never give up. It's time to see. 
That sign hit home. I think the Vikings brought a bigger load to this stadium today than the Saints expected. Anthony Carter again. And another catch. And a pickup of 17. You see that catch there, Pat? That's where he looked like Fred Blitnikoff. Exactly. And it seems like I've seen Fred do this so many times. Just come off, good release, drive your guy deep, and then go to the out, and then just hang there. Hang there until the ball gets there. Get both hands and just crap it out of the air. Hang there and maybe come back a little bit to get away from the defender. That's the smartest thing any wide receiver does is always work a little back towards the quarterback because you can beat the guy out and then you have another chance to beat him. First to ten. And off this to Anderson. Over the right side. Gain of two. Stopped by Sam Mills again. Yeah, it was interesting last night talking to the Vikings and they said that, you know, they lost three out of their last four. They thought their game last Saturday was really a playoff game. They lost that. They had a lot of pressure on them. Then they felt this game, they're the underdogs. Everyone's down on them. No one expects anything on them, out of them. And maybe they said, maybe we'll play better without any pressure. Second and eight. They certainly played well enough. Nelson has got some room to the outside. Scoops away, and finally Sam Mills takes him down after a pickup of four. Minnesota has dominated from the beginning after the Saints went ahead 7-0. But Minnesota's had the ball 27 and a half minutes. 11 and a half minutes more than New Orleans. And the Saints led the league in possession time during the regular season. I'll tell you, these guys just got everything taken out of them. But I think the reason is that the Viking defense, led by the defensive line, really smothered the same offense. Leo Lewis was a man in motion. They get the ball out to Anderson, who had it, juggled it, looked upfield, and lost it. He knows he had room. On comes Chuck Nelson and his holder, Bucky Scribner, or Cookie Gilchrist, or whoever he is. I, I can't... I just don't yeah. see why those names get connected. Yeah, especially the types of guys. I mean, Bucky Scribner's a left-footed punter, and Cookie Gilchrist was a big, booming, tough fullback. Gilchrist. Cookie Gilchrist may have been the best blocking running back that ever played the game. 32-yard field goal attempt. Scribner is the holder. Nelson is the kicker. He's hit one already. He's hit two. Vikings increase their lead to 34 to 10. Still in the third quarter. That summer all John Madden at the Louisiana Superdome, the NFC's wild card game. And it's been wild for Minnesota. They lead the game 34 to 10 with a minute and 15 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Chuck Nelson, who just hit that field goal to make it 34-10 will kick off and so far he has not kicked a single ball in the direction of Mel Gray all but one has gone to Barry Word I think with a score 24-10 I've been teasing him enough I'd kick him one would you tease him yeah no you've been teasing him all day oh, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Give him one. What the heck? Well, they flip flopped the returners now. Hilliard's gone to where Word was. Not much to do with that one. Word down to in the end zone. Next Sunday, following the NFC Divisional Playoff game, CBS Sports will present two of the most successful college basketball teams of the 80s. Georgetown, led by guard Perry McDonald, against DePaul and point guard Rod Strickland next Sunday, live at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on CBS Sports, the home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. John Madden and I will be in Chicago next week. The quarterback, back to throw. 
intended receiver, the intended receiver, he fell down. The pass is incomplete. I tell you, I bet the the Tice family is proud. You know, they have two two sons, both playing tight end, both playing in the NFL, both playing in Dome Stadium, both playing in the playoffs. And I'll tell you, that, that would really be something. Yeah, and then you hope there's always a chance that they could both play in the Super Bowl against each other. Their father, I'm sure, is a Saint Seahawk man, but he's also an avid Giant fan. Wilson just barely does get it away. Intended for Dalvin Hilliard, bounced off the back of one of the officials. Incomplete. Scott Studwell coverage they tell you once once you've played a defensive line and you've been all over the quarterback and you've been shutting them down and knocking them around in every way you can then it's like a fight in the 12th or 13th round after you've beaten a guy down then other things like that come easy the sacks and knockdowns the guy throws them in the back of the official third and ten for the Saints intended for Eric Martin is behind him and incomplete and Dolman came close to Wilson watch him right here going against Dombrowski he's just going to go right around him watch he hits him with that offhand the right hand sprints right by him and again the guy with that speed of Dolman he's about a four five four six guy weighs 262 pounds and when he gets you the from that backside you got him. Hanson back to punt back deep for Minnesota. Less than a minute left to play in the third quarter. Carter at the fourth. They get knocked down. How quickly they bounce up! You know that proves you can't hurt me. Look at Carter; he's still going around explaining. I think he did hurt him a little because he's going to go limping off there. But the thing is, when they get hit, they're not going to stay down. Watch him, number 82, John Tice is really going to put a lick on him as he comes in right there. Watch him; I mean, he hits him and spins him around. Now watch Carter all in one motion. He spin and back up. Gustafson has taken his place. This is D.J. Dozier. Left side stopped by Sam Mill after a gain of four. The clock ticking down in the final seconds of quarter number three. Minnesota leading 34-10. You know, those little guys getting hit, it's kind of like the baseball, you know? You know, you know, a guy gets hit in baseball, he never rubs it, never lets you show it. Boom, you always bounce up. Never let, never let them think they hurt you. It's almost defiance. <laughs> That's how they've gotten through life, though, defiant, That's those right. guys. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Minnesota Vikings, 34. The New Orleans Saints, 10. Saints 10. And we now pause for a word from your local station. Here's a pass rush a moment ago on Wade Wilson. Well, you know, you see Chris Dolman coming from the backside. Now, you watch Dave Wilson here. As he's getting hit, you know one thing. Get your feet out of the ground. Watch how he just pulls both feet and put them out. Now, that's how you don't get those knee things. When a guy gets a knee is when he has that foot planted and he gets hit. Now, as Dave Wilson felt that, he just pulled both feet up, and then he could go to the ground and not take that twist on the joint. Here's Darren Nelson spinning. Enough for Viking first down, a pickup of five. I called him Wade Wilson. You were right. Dave Wilson. Ricky Jackson on the stop. See that? You got to like that. I mean, Darren Nelson's running running so hard today and so fast, he has to tape his pants on. I mean, you got to like that when you 
you know, that, that you're going and you got those hips moving and that stuff's moving in the lower legs that, that you're just going to fly right out of your pants. You're going to pants yourself. Well, we've had a guy. Tape them. We had a guy run out of his shoes. shoes. That's acceptable. Pants, I'm not sure about. There's Nelson again, hit by Swilling. Vaughn Johnson. Pickup of two. Then the clock runs. Nope. Uh, talked John earlier in the game about what a factor the noise level could be for the Saint fans who had been so excited about their team and the nine straight victories and the first appearance in the playoffs. The Vikings have just taken that factor and stuffed it. Well, that's the way you do it. You know, you you, you get off, you jump on him, you get an early lead. And I always say that'll quiet him down. Nelson again. Skips. And dances before he's stopped by Waymer and gets nine yards. Yeah, Nelson is trying to get all that stuff out of there. This is what he sees. He's going to he's going to take that in the middle. It's a little delay play. See him bounce to the right. Then he takes the ball. Then he's looking. He makes a move. <laughs> That's a great Ooh. move in there. And then back. Then when he he feels he can't get any more. He just puts both hands on the ball. You see in his move. He moved from right to left about three yards in one step. That's a Darren dance. As opposed to the Benson Boogie. This is Dozier. Thomas Anderson. Beg your pardon. He's inside the 15 to about the 14. Rhett Maxey finally had to bring him down. Alfred Anderson is one of those guys who is in there because he's a blocker. And he's usually going to block for Darren Nelson. Now they say, what the heck? You've blocked long enough. Let's give it to you. So they get a counter. He stepped to the right, makes that counter move. Boom, right back to the left, up the middle. And now this Viking offense has the Saint defense beaten down. They've been out there a long time. That's what time of possession means. When you see the time of possession, that means that the other team's defense was on the field that long. First and 10, Minnesota. From the Saints, 15. Flag on the play. This is Dozier this time. Up to about the 12. Wilkes made the stop. Gain of three. But this one I think they'll bring back. Jerry Burns there in the sideline. He looked like he'd been through three or four games. And a car wash. <laughs> Illegal motion. Number 76 offense. First down. Burnsy. He's quite a guy. I'll tell you one thing. The players sure like him and respect him. So long an assistant under Bud Grant. A few years in Green Bay. Second NFL season. His record is 19 and 12. And don't forget going with that. A replacement team that didn't win any games. The record would be better. made the tackle uh, you can see their year coming to an end and it's easy to say that they had a great year they got to the playoffs for the first time in their history and they ought to be proud of that and it's been a super year but I'll tell you it's hard to take I mean that's hard for Jim Moore to take yeah you're going to say yeah yeah but we didn't do what we had to do we didn't do it today you can call it a learning experience or lack of experience whatever you want to call it the disappointment is the same thing. Hassan Jones was the man. In motion. This is Alan Rice, the ball carrier. He's down to about the 11. Gain of seven. Alfred Anderson and uh, Alan Rice played at Baylor together. They must have, that's what Jerry Burns said last year. Said, Dude, they must have had a pretty good running team there, huh? Tell you what, you look around the league and there are a lot of players playing in the NFL from Baylor. Here's Bob Schnelker. All he brings to the game is those couple little cards. Has all his plays there. Just, you know, and 
when Bob Snelker calls those plays on the sideline, if you notice, he's usually by himself. No other coaches around him. Rice and Dozier are the two runners. That's Dozier. And on his feet, he gets inside the five to about the three. Pick up of seven. Ricky Jackson tripped him up. D.J. Dozier was the number one draft choice this year of the Vikings, you know, after his great year at Penn State. And someday, I think, is going to be the, you know, the receiver, the, the running back, the type of guy who can do all the things. is an eligible receiver. But right now, is right now, he has to play behind Darren Nelson. Perhaps you heard Tom Dooley's voice in the background saying 52 is an eligible receiver. That would be Randy Rasmussen. <laughs> who lines up in a tight end on the right side. First and goal. Dozier motion. And off to Rick Finney this time. Frank Warren on the stop. Finney is 240 pounds from Washington. He's a short yardage guy. There's Schnelker. You see, look, he just has those plays there. With his left hand, he just gives them to Wade Wilson, and then Wilson signals him in. Bob's made a lot of stops, assistant coaching jobs around the league. I played with him with the Giants, and in spite of all those stops and all the stress, he hasn't aged today. <laughs> he looks good. Kramer. High over the head of Alan Rice. He was nudged by Sam Mill. But no penalty marker. I bet Jerry Burns is feeling good now, not only about this win, but about the fact that they were so frustrated. You know, I, mean, I think he knew he had a good team. He knew that they could move the ball. He knew that they were pretty good on defense, but they just couldn't score. And they were getting ahead, and they were losing, and losing leads, and not taking advantage of opportunities. And as he said, if we ever put this thing together, we're going to be dangerous. Well, they've been dangerous today. Didn't make it. Allen Rice, left side, couldn't nudge it in. Here comes the field goal unit. Sam Mills led the defense only a gain of a yard. Nelson. Hey, Jim Mora has to feel good about this year though I mean you can't now I know that but I think that the Saints are on the right track I mean I I felt this year they were a playoff team I don't think they're a Super Bowl team yet but I think they're on the right track I mean they're moving in the right direction and in the years to come once they get there I think they're going to be there for a long time they have a nucleus of a lot of talented young players not too much publicity about them yet but there will be a 19 yard field goal attempt by Chuck Nelson and he's three for three. He had taken some heat. In fact, Minnesota brought in Yon Sinaru to work with the kickers. It worked. Here's a brief summary of what's taken place in this Viking dominance. Anthony Carter has accounted for 209 yards in total offense, two touchdowns. One of them an 84 yard punt return. Reuben Mays led the Saints in rushing. He went out with a knee sprain. Minnesota leads 37 to 10 with 714 left to play in this contest. How do you explain it. Well I think I think the big thing is that the Viking line whipped the Saint line and they took control of that line of scrimmage. They didn't let him run. They rushed the passer. They just smothered the whole offense. Then that gave Darren Nelson and Anthony Carter the time to work. Well, that's the kind of thing that they had hoped to do. They hoped to be able to run. Obviously, you always hope to be able to do that. The Saints had hoped to be able to throw on first down. They never gave them a chance to do that. That's what I've always said. Everything starts in the line. You know, you can have all these plays and designs and this thing but if you don't get the guys blocked then nothing means anything. Nelson's kickoff. Another line drive. This one handled by Michael Adams. He gets out near the 30. Ray Berry made the stop and the Vikings special teams as well. We came into this game thinking 
And in fact, as we said at the beginning of the broadcast, Jim Morris said yesterday, if it weren't for our special teams, we wouldn't be in the playoffs. But today, the Vikings have stolen that thunder as well. You know, and even Jerry Burns said it last night. He said, he said, really, where they have the edge on us is their special team. So not only did Jim Moore think it, Jerry Burns thought it. So lo and behold. Dave Wilson still the quarterback. Alden Hilliard was the intended receiver. Reggie Rutland hit him just as the ball arrived. You know, other than Doug Martin on the on the defensive line, who's an eight-year vet, this is a young group. Chris Dolman and, and Keith Millard are both their third year. Henry Thomas is a rookie. So this is a group, these defensive linemen, these Vikings, they're going to get better. They're going to build another edition of the Purple Peter People Eater. Lonzel Hill. the intended receiver. Hey, there's a guy who's going to be a pretty good tackle, I think, that Jim Dombrowski there. He's learning process. The second year. It is a learning process, but when you're the left tackle on an NFL team, you're always playing against that speed rusher, that guy who's half lineman, half linebacker. Today's drawn Dolman. It's been a long day. Well, they expected that was a place they were going to have to help, and here's Wilson. like a Mike Tyson right. Eric Martin felt that one. He just came out. Mm, Let's watch it here as, as Martin comes to catch it. Now watch number 30 come in. Give him that right. That's a knockout punch. That's more than a nudge. No, that's that short one. You know, yeah. boom. Hanson back to putt. Vikings lead it 37 to 10. 6.48 left to play. Line drive kick handled by Anthony Carter. And he spun around, lost the ball. A hat comes flying in. And the Saints, I believe, got it back. And I think in the fourth quarter, with a score 37 to 10, I don't mean to second guess, but I don't think I would have Anthony Carter in there returning punts anymore. I would think that he's done his job today, and I would just keep him healthy for the 49ers next week. Vaughn Johnson is the man who made the hit, and Jakes came up with the recovery. And I agree with you. That guy's given his day's work already. Yeah, he earned that $6,000. You know, most of these guys take a, a pay cut to play in this game because in the regular season, they get a percentage of their, you know, if they're 16 games, they get one sixteenth of their salary every week. In this game, each team, each player gets six thousand dollars. In addition to what the replacement players get. All in here, your right side picked up seven yards. Lena Henderson on the stop. And the Saints get it back. Maybe. Minnesota got it. The Saints had a shot at it. Joey Browner, the Vikings, all pro safety, down on his knees and slow getting up. Dolman made the recovery. He gets off the ball, then now he comes back and causes that fumble to Dave Wilson. Watch, he, he just beats Edelman up the field. Now, now he throws him by with that left arm, comes back, tackles Wilson from behind, and uh, causes a fumble. Now that's raising havoc. And he's been doing that all day. Anderson over the left side, picked up four yards. There he is. You know, he was stopped one night by a policeman, and he got in the argument with a policeman, and he told him that his arms are more powerful than the policeman's gun. Another of those who played in the USFL. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's something. This guy, this guy goes goes at both ends. I mean, he loves life. He loves football, and 
He loves to get down there and mix it up. Gonna loves to a, lead with his head. Going to be a father in February. And he said, I can't wait for that either. Holy God damn it! Anderson. That'll be a Viking first down. They picked up 12. Anderson did. Stopped by Brett Maxey. Scoring summary. Bobby Bear after the Saints recovered a Tommy Kramer fumble. Hit Eric Martin with a touchdown. Nelson then hit a 42-yard field goal. It was 7-3. And then the thing that broke things open for Minnesota, Anthony Carter, an 84-yard punt return. And then Wilson to Jordan. It was 17-7 at that point. Continue bringing you up to date in the second quarter. Rice threw the option pass to Anthony Carter for his second touchdown. And Morton Anderson made a 24-10. And then on a timeless play, Wilson threw a Hail Mary alley-oop type with no time on the clock to end the first half. Wilson then got a 32-yard Nelson, rather. 32-yard field goal, 19-yard field goal a moment ago, and it's 37-10. That's the way it stays, and the Vikings on the move again with 440 left to play, second and three. Finney. Out of bounds at about the 30, a pickup of two. Swilling. Anthony Carter has removed helmet and put on recreational hat so and I, think I, think, through. I think once you do that that means you're not going to catch any more passes you're not going to return any more punts you can start your celebration Joey Browner alongside there's Keith Millard who's had such a spectacular day it would hard to be charged with the responsibility to pick the most valuable player in this game well I'll tell you I think I think the defensive line I think Keith Millard and Chris Dolman and and that group in there because they they're the guys that control this game that enables the other folks to do their thing Rick Finney was hit at the line of scrimmage wouldn't go down hit by Mills picked up two yards and is close to another Viking first down. If Bobby Abair could just never get anything started today, he really didn't have a chance. Meantime, it's been a big season and a recreational week here in New Orleans. Outside the Superdome, the crowd departing. Of course, they played the Sugar Bowl game between Syracuse and Auburn on Friday. A lot of people stayed around from that in anticipation of this wild card game. New quarterback, Rick Gannon. This is DJ DJ Dozier inside the 30. Vaughn Johnson made the stop. Dozier got four. And the clock continues to tick away the second. 37 to 10, Minnesota. As you play defense, the number one thing you always say after a play is they're holding. <laughs> yeah, I would have made the play, except they were holding me. They're holding every play. They're holding. They're holding. Scores 37 to 10. They're holding. They're holding. Oh, yeah, they've done a good job today, these Vikings. Second down. Let's start Hassan Jones in motion. Decided he didn't like what he saw. Had tried to go back the other way. Vaughn Johnson, no gain. These Vikings will face the San Francisco 49ers, who, like the Saints, who were on a roll, the 49ers are rolling. That's next Saturday, Minnesota at Candlestick. It's 3.30 Eastern time. It begins with the NFL today. The divisional playoffs. And on Sunday, the Redskins will go to Soldier Field, face the Bears. John Mann and I will be there. Gannon. Take off. Slides out of 
out of bounds past the markers after two minute warning a gain of seven and another, another Viking first down 37 10 Minnesota after falling behind seven nothing has taken control what's left of the crowd at the Superdome standing Applauding in tribute to the kind of year the Saints have had the first time they've ever been in the playoff. They waited 21 years for a playoff game. They finally got it and they haven't forgotten. I think that tribute is not only to the players and the coaches and Jim Moore and Jim Finks in the front office, Tom Benson, the owner. With a group that they did, the job that they did of bringing this team to where it is today. They're going to be there for a while. Here is Dozier around the corner, knocked out of bounds inside the 10. Gene Atkins. Dozier got 15 yards. You know, the interesting thing about Minnesota winning here today, Pat, I know during the week, uh, Bill Walsh, the 49ers, they had the week off and asked Walsh who he was practicing against, who he was getting ready for. He said to Washington Redskins that made sense to him. Well, lo and behold the Redskins are going to go to Chicago and these Minnesota Vikings are going to be showing up in San Francisco. Well if everything works out we'll be talking in the post game show after this game is over not only to the losers and the winners but a live interview we'll have with Bill Walsh. First and goal from the eight. Jones is the man in motion. This is Dozier inside the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. An eight-yard smash by the number one draft choice, D.J. Dozier. D.J. is taking a little of the the results of that work, that hard work that they've got all all day and getting them beaten down, and they got them beaten down, and and now he can go in there and make things happen like this. Look, he has some good moves. Started to the right, bounced back into the left. Then there was just two left between he and the goal line. So he just decided, what the heck, I'll run over him. He runs bigger than he is. Yeah, he got the name DJ. Nope. His dad's nickname was Deke. As a kid, they called him Deke Jr. They said that's too long a name for a little kid. So they abbreviated it to DJ. 44 to 10 in favor of Minnesota with a minute 46 left to play. They've been impressive. 44 to 10 Minnesota over New Orleans. And the Vikings about to kick off after DJ Dozier's touchdown run. Tom Benson the owner of the Saints who made that Benson boogie famous came out on the field not to dance after his team has been beaten soundly but to say thank you to these St. fans. I'll tell you I respect that. I think if you're going to be there when they win you better be there when you lose too. One of the up men in the front part of the wedge Stan Brock was the man who returned the kickoff for 13 yards. Coming up tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, she wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. Then the CBS Sunday movie, Once Upon a Texas Train, a comedy western starring Willie Nelson and Richard Whitmark. That's tonight, here on CBS. Saints ball, Dave Wilson, the quarterback, 44 points scored by Minnesota, the most ever. By a wild card team, Eric Martin steps out of bounds. It has not been a day when the Saints have gotten a lot of breaks go their way. No, it hasn't been. It started that way right off the bat, and it's been a downhill slide for these Saints today. And it shows in the face of Jim Mora. And the jubilation. Jerry so, Burns has scored so many points today, he had to put a sweater on. <laughs> he looks like a very happy Burgess Meredith. <laughs> Here's Dalton Hilliard on a draw play. Knocked down by Joey Browner and Tim Newton. Yeah, 
Tim Newton, he was the, the starter a year ago, and he was beaten out, and I think one of the reasons you could probably see why he was beaten out. Brings too much of a load. <laughs> Mark Pennis knocked out of bounds. Stops the clock after a gain of 10 with a minute and nine seconds left to play. You know, he had his brother. His brother, Nate Newton, is a, a guard for the Dallas Cowboys. Tim Newton is, of course, is a defensive tackle. But it looks like he's gotten some numbers up there that tip those Toledos pretty high. I'll tell you, the numbers on his back are pretty well stretched. Wilson gets away from one rusher. Throws for Dalton Hilliard. Incomplete. Yeah, there's Tim Newton. As you said, that nine and that six are kind of growing apart there on him. You know, Nate Newton, his brother, was nicknamed the Kitchen. Tim Newton is only six foot. Well over 300 pounds. He's going to play himself in shape here at the end of this game. Somehow I doubt it. Wilson is intercepted. Steve Freeman. Still on his feet and Freeman gets down and is hammered at the 22-yard line by Stan Brock. 30-yard return. Let's watch Newton here. He's isolated. He's going to run right by the quarterback. I mean, if he hits him, he'd knock the quarterback back into next day. He just rolled up on his leg. Got Dave Wilson on that right leg as he threw the interception. Now there's a guy that's hard to isolate. <laughs> He's hard to keep in the frame, isn't he? <laughs> that was always my problem. I could never be isolated. <laughs> Go to get half of me. Me and Tim, we're in that same group. That Bubba group, that Brotherhood of United Bad Bodies of America. We stand up together. Rich Gannon just kneels. We have 43 seconds remaining. This game presented by the authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New Orleans Saints and the National Football League is prohibited. I don't believe they'd like to rebroadcast it in New Orleans. But in Minnesota, they may want to keep this one for a while. Day, and they're going to give the, the rebroadcast or the relook at these tapes is going to give those 49 or something to think about. That's right. The final score from the Louisiana Superdome is the Minnesota Vikings 44. New Orleans Saints 10. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show coming up next on CBS Sports. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. With three and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter and the Saints ahead 7-3, to three, the putt wound up in the hands of Anthony Carter. Carter with an alley to the right, cut back to the middle and exploded for an 84-yard punt return for the touchdown that put the Minnesota Vikings ahead this day. They score three times in the second quarter, and they go on to rout the New Orleans Saints 44-10, to the final. And the Vikes advance now in the Super Bowl tournament. They will take on the San Francisco 49ers next Saturday afternoon. And if you're wondering about this team, about the favorite, when they go out there, it'll be obviously the 49ers. But the last two times the Vikings have played the 49ers, they have beaten them. In 1986, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, they won, and again the following year. So two straight triumphs by the Vikings over the 49ers. We'll continue with more. We'll hear from the winning coach and some of the victorious Vikings with Irv Cross when we go to wins the wild card. They advance to San Francisco next Saturday afternoon. And with us live now is the outstanding head coach of the 49ers, Coach Bill Walsh. Coach Walsh, uh, with New Orleans favored, did the staff spend extra time on the Washington Redskins, or do you split your time when you have a week off like this? Well, we spent a lot of time on the Redskins, as you might guess, but we did obviously take a close look at Minnesota. 
there's some similarities uh, defensively between the two teams, so that helps somewhat. Bill, I want you to take a look at the monitor because there's two big play men on this Viking attack. Anthony Carter, whom we saw return the punt. Darren Nelson, whom you like very much coming out of Stanford. Talk about him for a time. Well, I spent a lot of time with Darren while I was at Stanford, as you know. I recruited him out of high school. And as a freshman, uh, he was a great success. And to be honest with you, Brent, I think one of the reasons I'm with the 49ers was Darren because the success we had uh, at Stanford, I think, catapulted me here. You know, Bill, when you take a look at the rosters of both New Orleans and Minnesota, one thing struck me. The Vikings have some great athletes on that defensive unit. We're going to watch Keith Millard. I thought he was dominating today. Your feelings about their defense? Well, it's great. Uh, Floyd Peters does a great job with their defense. He always has done that. Uh, charging defense, an aggressive defense, and uh, one that you have to stop quickly or they really penetrate. Now, the last two times you have met the Vikings, you have lost. You had to go with Jeff Kemp in 86 in San Francisco. The year before that was the game up in Minneapolis, and you were beaten. Bud Grant, it was kind of an emotional high for the Vikings. Your feelings now about this matchup, do they match up well against your 49ers? Well, they match up well against anybody. We've known that all season. Well, they've had bad breaks and sort of zany things happen to them, but now they're on track. Uh, they've got super offense. Uh, they do a great job with their... The uh, skill part of their football, their quarterbacking is excellent, their pass rush is great, and uh, we're a very sober group at this point. Bill, tell me about your starting quarterback. Will you stay with Steve Young, or will you go back to Joe Montana now? Oh, no. Joe Montana is our quarterback, Brent, as you might guess. He was uh, named All-Professional this year, and uh, he's had a great season, and we'll count on Joe to deal with that pass rush. All right, Bill, we look forward to seeing you next Saturday out in Candlestick Park, and congratulations to the 49ers. We're going to come back now and hear from Coach Jerry Burns. December was a lousy month, but 1988 is looking up. Let's go to Irv Cross. <laughs> looking up indeed, Brent. 44-10 to 10 in the first round of the playoffs, Coach. Congratulations. You know, last night you told us that uh, your team has been unsettled all year long. Are we now seeing the Vikings come together? Well, I hope so, uh, Irv. You know, uh, we got a lot of talent on this club, and uh, just through uh, circumstances, uh, we just haven't uh, put everything together. Offensively, defensively, special teams, and, and today I think uh, they all played well. Well, they all played well indeed. You know, Wade Wilson, you started with Tommy Kramer, quarterback. Wilson had a great first half. Boy, we didn't see him in the second half. Why not? Well, uh, just before the half there, uh, on, on a scramble there, he got his bell rung a little bit and, and had a bad, bad uh, headache. And our, our uh, medical people thought perhaps we shouldn't go with him. But he would have been ready to go had Tommy went down. But uh, Tommy went in there and did a great job for us. And uh, I'm just happy. Both those quarterbacks are great quarterbacks and, and both uh, deserving of being part of the win. Well, of course, next week, uh, would you start Kramer again and uh, rotate Wilson, or how do you want to use your quarterbacks? <laughs> we got to think about next week. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that every week. I don't know. I don't know right now. I, 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 like I say, I like to see both of them play and, and both of them be credited for a victory, but uh, we'll make that decision early, early in the week. <laughs> Coach, congratulations on a big win. Thank you very much. Brent. All right, Irv, when we come back, we'll hear the early line from Jimmy the Greek. How many points will the San Francisco 49ers be favored by next Saturday?